Hi, this is Juliet. Welcome back to my studio. This is an intro to a couple of videos I've put together showing you different ways of making leaves. They include leaf beads and leaves on head pins. I use a variety of different leaf pressing tools and patterning techniques with fritz and, and glass. And um, some of them are designed to be constructed off mandrel with a bale. Some of them are on a mandrel where the bead becomes the, the hanger and it has the leaf off of it. The others are on head pins and I use a variety of different kind of presses. You can see this style versus this style. And this one here is a different one. Um, and this is yet another one. So there's a whole number of ways you can make leaves. So make sure you click like and subscribe, and there will be a set of four of these coming out in the coming days. Thanks for viewing. First, I'm gonna show you the collection of leaf tools I've accumulated over the years. Um, obviously, don't, you, know, you don't need all of these, um, but I'll just show you some of the different styles that are out there. So the first one is this, uh, which is a leaf masher. It's designed for off mandrel work, though I have, um, with some limited success, been able to use it on fairly fat beads on a mandrel. Um, these, I think they have at Aero Springs and a number of other, other online sources. These two uh, beads here, or tools here, I got from an Etsy seller. I think she's in Russia. Um, this first one has uh, just sort of this uh, striation or a half starburst pattern in it. Um, it's also useful for shells and a number of other things, but it makes some great stripes for leaves, some uh, textured stripes for leaves. And this one is fairly similar um, in terms of it's uh, you know, set up on a pair of pliers, basically with the brass ends. It also has a particular leaf shape in it, so it makes some interesting beads. It's a little more finicky to get the right amount of glass um, so you're not oozing out outside of the shape, but it's got a nice leaf pattern in it as well. Then these ones are um, actually feather pullers, but they also work for leaves, and I got them from Karen Leonardo. And they're, uh, this is the small, um, or the fine tooth pattern, and she has a couple that have bigger teeth with bigger spacings, like a medium and a large, I believe. So these ones are really cool, I like those, and um, I frequently use beeswax on them to keep them so that they release. Here is another pair of mashers. It's basically a pair of pliers that are flat and it has this uh, kind of arrow leaf pattern ground into both sides. So when you mash it, you get a distinctive leaf pattern. This is good for small, tiny little things. But this one's really cool. And I think I got this at Eric Springs. It wasn't that expensive. Um, there's also these, which are pedal pushers, which are also from, or pedal pullers, also from Karen Leonardo. And you can use these to make individual leaf components. They won't have a particular texture on it, but it allows you to get a neat leaf shape, and they're good for sculptural work. Um, it's useful to have a good pair of pointy tungsten tweezers, or regular tweezers, or if you have tweezers that have a little bit of a serrated edge on it, you can also use those to make some of the marks and the veining in the leaf manually. If you're gonna make the style with handmade bales on them as opposed to making it on a mandrel with a bead, um, a tool like this is good to open up and round up the bale, and this one is a graphite tool. And if you're gonna make leaves on head pins, which is one of my favorite things to do, you need something to hold the head pin. This tool here is from Bronwyn Heilman. I like it, it holds all different gauges of wire. You can push them in the little slot there, and not just necessarily in the middle, so you can hold pretty narrow wire. And this is easy to release. Um, if, if you set it up and you got your wire long enough, this doesn't really get hot. But if, as you're about to go into the kiln, if it is hot, you can always just take a pair of pliers and it's real simple to just loosen it so you can get this off and pop it into the kiln once you have your leaf made on it. So those are pretty cool. I like these. Um, let's see. The other thing is uh, for the wire when I make head pins, I tend to use Canthel wire. Um, I get that on Amazon. Um, there's a 22 gauge which is uh, somewhat thicker and that's good if you're doing something like, you know, a little bouquet of flowers or something that you want to have a little bit more structure to it. Otherwise I use 24 gauge if it's something that I'm going to 
you like wire wrap um, and you make the bead into a little, uh, or make the leaf into a little bead pendant or something like that. Then I'll use the 24 gauge wire. Make sure when you're cutting the cantho wire that you use really strong cutters that have like an inset in there. Don't use your good silver cutting wires because the cantho wire will ruin them. Um, the other thing you might consider using is some fritz. Fritz work great for beads. Um, I have a, a few out here. Uh, the, this one, Montmartre from Val Cox and Bora Bora, both have some reduction frit in there. So at the end, you put it in a reducing flame, you can get some nice uh, golden sh sheen on it. Firecracker's got a cool color uh, blend um, that I like to use for leaves, and that one's from Glass Diversions. But you don't need to use frit, you can use any color frit, you can use green ones or fall colors or pretty much anything goes, sky's the limit. Um, I tend to use a lot of clear glass with the fritz and it gives it a little bit of um, transparency through it and I, I really like the look of that. Occasionally I'll use an opaque white or transparent green or opaque green, but anyway, the colors are really up to you. I'm going to just demonstrate a couple of techniques, so thank you. But before I start to use it, I'm just going to rub a little bit of beeswax on the surfaces on the inside. I don't want to put too much. I'm not trying to glob it up, but just get a very light, loose coat. Um, the edges and the points is where the uh, glass tends to stick if it's going to stick to it. So usually, you know, before I sit down to use it, I'll just wipe a little bit on. You have to let a bit of a skin form first. If you put this all in here too hot, it will stick to these tongs because they are fairly thin, especially the small one, which is the one I'm using. So let a bit of a skin form, center that, and give it a quick press and release. You might have seen a little bit of a, a puff of smoke. That's from the beeswax. That helps keep it from sticking. So since I want to shape the leaf bead into more of a elongated leaf um, point, and I want to move you know, the entire mass of glass with it, so I'm going to heat it evenly and then gently touch the clear rod to the point um, of the glass here, not in the flame. We're going to do it outside of the flame, and that's just going to make enough tension to kind of pull the leaf shape down a little bit. And since we are doing this out of the flame, you don't have to worry about ruining all of the beautiful leaf shapes that you've just pressed into the bead. So whenever you're working with a bead on a mandrel with bead release, I like to kind of finger polish it and just rub it like this to get any of the large bumps off, um, and that will help make little pieces not fly off when you first put it into the flame, as well as allowing your bead to kind of come off of the mandrel at the end once it's annealed a lot more smoothly and consistently. So my favorite way to hold um, the wire for making headpins is using this trick tool from Bronwyn where you can just slide the wire in there and snug it up and it's really easy to release. You can also use hemostats to hold your wire when making beads. I like the kind with the round loop up at the top because it holds the wire in two separate places and it seems to be a little bit more secure. Okay guys, so the first bead in this um, tutorial series is going to be making a single leaf head pin, and I will show you what you can do with those in a few minutes. The second one is going to be making a pair or double ones at the same time um, with one piece of folded wire that can then be cut apart. And the third style is going to be a more traditional on a mandrel with the leaf hanging off of it, sort of like a pendant. And the fourth style is going to be a freeform leaf pendant um, that does not use any sort of mandrel at all. So here's just a preview of a few of the different things that you can create with um, these designs. There's lots of different jewelry styles as well as cute little knickknacks that you can make. So I can't wait for you guys to get started and join us on this journey. Um, I hope you enjoy all the tutorials and have fantastic inspiration and ideas to create lots of really cool new things. If you click the link on the screen, it'll take you to the playlist that includes all of these leaf tutorials that we just discussed. Thanks!